I'm Rachel Hernandez, real estate investor turned mobile home investor and best-selling author. I make a living investing in mobile homes for cash flow for long-term passive income. After many mistakes and lessons learned, I've been able to create the kind of life where I can do the types of things I want to do, not have to do. I created the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast to share with you what I've learned so you can spend more time with family, friends, and do things you love. Mobile home investing can help you get there. If you want to hear real stories with practical and actionable advice you can use from someone who's been in the trenches and who's still investing today to create the type of life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Well, hey there, and welcome to the Adventures of Mobile Homes podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of AdventuresinMobileHomes.com. Thank you so much for joining me here on the 31st episode of the podcast. Now, just in case you missed it, be sure to tune in to the last episode where I talk about how to close the deal with buyers or renters for your mobile home investing business and how to coordinate getting your applicants to sign and do the park paperwork before yours. Also, I cover in that episode what you should be doing between the time between when you get the okay from the park manager that your applicants have been approved to live in the park and when your applicants sign the actual paperwork and why you shouldn't be too hasty and think the deal is closed because anything can happen. Until your applicants have signed all of the paperwork, handed you their move-in fee, and you've given them the keys, the deal isn't closed. This is the first episode in the series. You can find it along with the show notes at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 30. And that is the number 30. Okay, so let's get started. So last week, I talked about the process of closing the deal with your applicants once they filled out the park's application and have been approved by the park to live there. Once you get the call from the park manager, Then you can make arrangements for your applicants to sign the park's paperwork before yours. Again, you can do it all on the same day. The applicants can sign the park's paperwork first, and then they can sign and do your paperwork. Or you can have them sign the park paperwork and give any type of necessary deposit to the park. Then they can call you once they've done the park paperwork, and you can schedule to do your own paperwork. Either way works, and I've done both. But today, I want to talk about the second part of the series. And that is doing your paperwork and the process I go through after my applicants have done the park's paperwork to live there. And when they're ready to sign my paperwork. I'll be going through my process of getting all of my paperwork together, the inspection process going through the home, getting the move-in fee from the applicants, and finally giving them the keys so they can move in. 
But before we move on, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey there, Rachel here. Do you need help with your mobile home investing business? Do you have questions that you need answers to? Maybe you have a potential deal in the works and you need a second opinion from an expert. Perhaps you just need someone to help guide you and get started. But you don't want to spend thousands of dollars doing it. Well, look no further. If you need help with your mobile home investing business or plans to be a mobile home investor, I do offer mentoring to those who need it. Get the help you need and your questions answered from me, an expert who has the experience and invests in mobile homes day in and day out. If you'd like to learn more, Go to www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash need help. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash need help. Get started today and I'll talk to you soon. Now, back to the show. Okay, first things first. So you've gone ahead and your applicants who were approved have done and signed all of the parks paperwork to live in there. And they've given the park their security deposit for the lot, which is part of the park's paperwork and something they'll receive back should they ever decide to move the home out of the park in the future. As a side note, I have in my own paperwork an understanding with my applicants that the home must stay in the park until they exercise their option to purchase the home. When I do a lease with option to purchase with the residents that I work with. We discuss this before any type of paperwork is filled out, so they know beforehand when the home is on the market. Getting back to it, so you're ready to schedule to do your own paperwork with your applicants, who have now signed all of the paperwork to live in the park. So, what's the next step? Well, the first thing you need to do is get all of your paperwork and items together that you'll need for the closing. Do this beforehand and give yourself time from between when you talk to the applicants to when you actually have the closing scheduled. As for the closing, I do them all at the home. As we do go through an inspection process so that the applicants can look to see if there's anything they see at a place. But I'll get to that in a bit, so hang in there. So, the first thing you want to do is get your closing checklist together. Remember in episode 22, where I talked about why it's so important to write things down for your mobile home investing business? Well, it is. Otherwise, you'll forget something. And I'll be honest... I've been one to be hasty, thinking I have everything in my head. But honestly, it's not a good system to work with, especially when you have multiple properties and multiple closings. 
because you can't remember everything. And I'll be sure to put a link for that episode here in the show notes, just in case you want to refresh your memory and check it out. Getting back to it, write everything down that you need for the closing. Make a list. This means getting all of your paperwork together. Whether you're planning to sell the home or rent it out. Whatever the case, you'll need all of the paperwork done and ready beforehand. As a side note about the paperwork, I actually bring two copies of the paperwork to the closing. One for me and one for the new residents. So yes, we have to sign both copies together, which can be kind of a hassle. But I think it's better than having to go to an office supply store down the street to make copies, which I've done. As for the park office, I try not to use their resources unless they offer it. So it's not really an option for me personally to use their copy machine for closings, Honestly, I'm fine signing two sets of paperwork with the new residents. It's not a big deal. Once they're done signing, it's over and done with. I just don't want to have to go make copies and come back. But that's just me. You can do whatever you feel works better for you. On a side note, if you're interested in seeing what type of paperwork to bring to the closing, I do have a sample closing document checklist in my book, Adventures in Mobile Homes, How to Get Started in Mobile Home Investing, and How You Can Too. I'll put a link here in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. Apart from the paperwork the new residents have to sign, I also get the smoke detectors ready and installed. This is an important part of the process, both for insurance as well as safety purposes. So you want to make sure there are new working smoke detectors for every mobile home that you fill. For me personally, I prefer the battery-operated smoke alarms to the wired ones. It's just easier to change out the batteries than to wire the home for the smoke alarms. Plus, if there's no electricity, then I'd still want the smoke alarms to work, which... They can, if battery-operated, just in case. It's a personal decision, but that's just what I feel comfortable doing. As for the smoke alarms, I test them with the new residents at the home during the closing. They sign a document acknowledging the smoke alarms were tested and work. This is for both our purposes and to have peace of mind that they work, just in case of a fire. Getting back to it, apart from the smoke alarms, I also have a set of keys made for the home. Now, typically... I like to make two sets of keys for the home, one for the husband and the wife. Usually, if they need more keys, 
then I usually just leave it up to them to do it. Unless they request. But honestly, I've never gotten a request in over a decade of doing this business for extra keys. Beyond the two that I give at the closing. One thing to remember is to be sure to test out the new keys that you make before the closing. It's happened to me on occasion where a new set of keys were made only to find out they didn't exactly fit in the keyhole and work. So I had to take them back and get them remade. It happens. It's an honest mistake, and nobody's perfect, especially if you're relying on a machine and the person manning it to do the work. Once I got the replacement keys, I made sure they worked in all of the locks, and they did. No big deal, but definitely a lesson learned. Regarding keys, I do keep one extra for myself. Usually, the one I use to make the copies. Since I'm doing a lease with the option to purchase, I keep one on file just in case. You really don't know if they'll be there and exercise their option or if they leave in the middle of the contract. So I do have a key just in case things don't go as planned. Now, I won't talk about it here as it's a lot to cover, but being in the mobile home investing business, you have to be prepared to take homes back just like real estate. So keep that in mind when you're just starting out. Getting back to things, I also bring a receipt book with me to my closings. I know, this sounds really archaic. I mean, who does that? But it's just an added measure to give the prospective applicants now residents, peace of mind that they can trust me. Plus, this is what the park office does, as well as many professionally managed apartment buildings, whenever someone is coming into the office and making a payment. So I do things in the same way. As I like to maintain a certain degree of professionalism, but that's just me and the way I do things. In any case, once you've got all these items, the smoke detectors bought and installed, your closing paperwork, copies of keys made, and your receipt book to record when you get their move in fee and exchange money, then you want to make an appointment for the closing with your new residence. Again, what I do is write things down. Make a list of all the items you want to cover and talk about during the closing. So let's talk about closing on the deal and getting the new residents in there for good. Before you do anything, you need to confirm everything, meaning you're meeting with them for the closing. Usually, I confirm either the day before, depending on when I scheduled the meeting, or if I recently scheduled the meeting, the day of the closing, just a couple hours before we are scheduled to meet. That way, it's fresh in their minds 
and they're ready. Now, on closing day, you want to get there a little early to check up on things. Give yourself at least half an hour or an hour just to be on the safe side. To get in the home and check up on any last minute items. Sometimes you may notice some dirt in the home if anyone's been through it, like contractors. Or maybe a fly got in the home. Bring a fly swatter with you if you can. I've taken care of many flies in my own experience in this business. Go through the home. Make sure everything looks good and it's presentable. Fix anything that looks out of place, like dirt or bugs you notice that somehow got into the home. Yes, it does happen, so be prepared. As for the signs, leave them up. You want to create a sense of urgency when the prospective residents come to do their paperwork. I let them know the signs will be taken down once we sign everything, they give the move-in fee, and I hand them the keys. But until then, the signs will stay up. And there may be people who knock on the door and or call to inquire about the home. I do this as an added measure just in case they have lingering doubts or feelings about the deal, which they shouldn't. But I really don't want to go down that road of them questioning every single line item I have on the paperwork if it's not necessary. Yes, I'll answer their questions, when they come up, though they have to understand that there are other people interested in the home, which there are, and we're there to do the closing. Now, if for some reason they change their minds, there's really nothing you can do. You don't want to force the deal because if they have any doubts whatsoever, it can affect your relationship with them as well as the deal down the road. And I've been down that road before when I forced a deal. And it's come back to haunt me down the road. So much that I ended up taking back a few homes because of it. And that's a subject that I may cover in another podcast episode in the future. So stay tuned. Getting back to it, let's talk about the actual closing at the home. Before the prospective residents come, I make sure all of the lights are on. If it's hot outside or cold, depending on the time of year and your location, I make sure the heating or air conditioning is on. I want to make sure they're comfortable, as well as me, during the closing. Now, as for the paperwork and my closing items, I lay everything out on the kitchen counter. And that's where we do the actual closing and sign the documents. Now, once the prospective residents come to the home, I let them in. Just like the open house, I ask them to remove their shoes, as all of the flooring is usually new with my mobile home fix-ups. 
And I also have removed my own shoes so they can see that I'm following my own rules. Now, usually they'll be familiar with this practice as they've already done it at the open house. And they should understand. After all, if this is going to be their home, then they'd like to keep it as clean as possible. So once they're in the home, I greet them and we exchange pleasantries. Just a little small talk, but not too much. I usually ask them if they're excited and what are their moving plans? Are they planning to move after we close the paperwork that day? Or do they need to wait a couple days? Many times they are eager and sometimes they bring some of their items to be moved into the home with them in their car. So after some small talk, I tell them exactly what we're going to do, meaning checking the smoke alarms to make sure they're all working properly, doing all of the paperwork for the home, having the chance to do a walkthrough to see if there are any items they see not working or out of place, and then exchanging the move-in fee for the keys. Once I go over that, then we start with the paperwork. First, I have them check the smoke alarms with me to make sure they're all working. We go through the home where they're at and test them out together. Then they sign a form acknowledging they are working. Again, this is for insurance as well as safety purposes to give them peace of mind. After that, I let them go through the house once more just to see if they missed anything. Sometimes they will check, but other times they'll say they're ready and they'll just want to do the paperwork. Again, many are eager to move in because, you know, it's been a long process. That's for sure. So after their inspection, we sign the rest of the paperwork. In my case, I do a lease with option to purchase, so we go over those documents. Another item that I make them sign is a separate agreement to abide by the rules and the regulations of the park. I remind them, which is on the agreement, that they are responsible for any lot rent owed to the park while they're living in the home. Plus, they have to maintain the appearance of the home to the park standards and mow and maintain the yard regularly. I also remind them, again, it's on the agreement, to keep the porch free of any trash and or debris as the park wants to maintain a nice appearance of all the homes there for their residents and their guests. Now, most times they'll already be familiar with this as they've signed a similar agreement with the park office. Though this agreement is just a reminder of what they need to do and the rules and regulations they need to abide by while living there. Now, if something comes up in the future with the park, and it has, 
I refer to this document with the residents that they signed with me. There have been times in the past where the park asks residents to do certain things, whether it be mowing the yard or removing items from the porch, where they may not do it. And in cases like this, I have to get involved via the park manager's phone call and refer to this document to my residents. And usually, I do this in writing. It's just more professional and official to do it that way. But that's just me and how I like to do business. Getting back to it, once I sign all the paperwork with the new residents, then we're done. I make sure to answer any questions that they might have. Now, one thing to note, usually the utilities will be on at the time of the closing. Most times, the electric just needs to be transferred over to the new resident's name with the electric company. The residents have to do this themselves, so I have a sheet that I provide to all of my new residents with the contact information for the utilities. Now, sometimes the gas is also handled out of the park, and the residents will also need to call the gas company to transfer their name over. I tell them to do it as soon as they can, and usually they do. Now, as a precaution, I do call these companies, usually in a week, just to make sure the name has been transferred into the new resident's name and out of my name, just for peace of mind. Other than that, I also provide a contractor information sheet to all of the new residents that I work with. These are a list of contractors I personally work with and who have done work on the home, as well as most of my other homes. Since I do a lease with option to purchase with the residents that I work with, I leave it up to them to handle the smaller items in the home. I make it clear in the beginning that they'll need to take care of the home. And if smaller items do break down and or need to be repaired, then they'll need to take care of it themselves. Now, usually they know this going in as we've talked about it along the process. Any larger items during their agreement that break down, such as the roof being damaged or major systems in the home needing repair, I'll take care of it as long as it's not due to negligence and just part of normal wear and tear. Honestly, I've had to do this on occasion with some of the residents that I work with. But for the majority of them, usually they do take care of the larger items as they see the homes as theirs. Some have replaced whole air conditioning systems or built new porches for their home. Again, it all comes down to your screening process, as covered in episode 27. You've got to know who you're working with and only work with people who are honest 
upfront, and reliable. Once we go over all the paperwork and I answer their questions, then they give me their move-in fee and I write them a receipt. And then, finally, I hand over the keys. And we're done. The last step I do in the process is to remove my signs off the home. Remember, I don't do this until all of the paperwork has been signed, they give me their move-in fee, and I give them the keys. So the signs have been on this home this entire time, even during the closing process. Because you never know what will happen. A deal isn't done until everything is signed, you get the move-in fee, and you hand over the keys. And the new residents are officially moved in. So there you have it. The second part in the series about how to close on the home and the process involved once your applicants have been approved by the park. As you can see, it is a process, a long process, that takes time and patience. So don't be hasty to fill the home with just anyone. You have to make sure that you're working with the right people from the beginning. But when you do, you'll be glad you did. And honestly, this will make the closing process so much easier. Yes, there's a lot of steps involved and paperwork to do, especially since it feels like you're doing double the paperwork. One, the residents have to do with the park and yours as well. And all this time, you still have the signs and your marketing out there, just in case things fall through. I know, it's a lot to do, and a lot to take in, especially with all of the steps involved. But after it's all over and done with, meaning you've signed all of the paperwork with your residents, they've given you their move-in fee, and you've handed them the keys so they can move in, then and only then can you finally say that you've done your first deal. It's over. And you did it. From start to finish. Congratulations. Now, how do you feel? And be sure to reflect on the experience and write things down because it's important. As mentioned in episode 22, the importance of writing things down so that you can see what mistakes you made and how you learned along the way. And if you need help in this area, definitely let me know. I do offer mentoring to those who need it. I'll put a link here with more information in the show notes if you're interested. So what did you think? Did this episode help you as a mobile home investor? I hope so. If you've enjoyed the show and find value with it, please consider supporting the show. I've enjoyed this podcasting journey so far, and it's something 
that I've always wanted to do. I'll include a link in the show notes on how you can support me if you'd like to check it out. For more information on this episode, check out the show notes where I link up some of the resources mentioned here. You can find it at www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 31. And that is the number 31. Again, www.adventuresinmobilehomes.com slash 31. And if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to share it with family and friends. And be sure to follow me and subscribe. If you have some time, I'd love to hear your feedback through a short Apple podcast review. Until next time, this is Rachel Hernandez, a.k.a. Mobile Home Girl of the Adventures in Mobile Homes podcast, signing off. Thanks for listening.